Now, uh, we spend a lot of time uh, in this state, in this country, looking at the road toll. Over the last few years, it's got better. Every year, fewer and fewer people die on our roads. Having said that, we still lose hundreds, in fact, thousands of Australians every single year. And that doesn't include the number of people who are badly hurt but don't actually die. Um, I have a real problem with some of the things we do on our roads here. I think we're terrible drivers. I've written about that before. I think we have far too many and too complicated road rules. You spend all your time looking at signs and looking at how fast you're going, not enough time actually concentrating on your driving. I think too many people don't drive manual cars as they should to learn how to drive properly. Hey, but what would I know? Joining me on the line now, uh, all the way from Sweden, he's an expert on research into what is called Vision Zero, and as the name suggests, that uh, is trying to get uh, the road toll down to zero. His name is Dr. Anders Lee. Dr. Lee, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, you're from Sweden. Does Sweden have a better road safety methodology, if you like, or, or why it does things compared to Australia? I think we share a lot of the basic ideas between Australia and Sweden, but perhaps we are a few years ahead of you when we look at the fatality numbers. I, I have driven a couple of Volvos in my time, and uh, Volvos are still reputed to be here in Australia to be amongst the safest cars on the road. Does that attitude to road safety sort of permeate through road rules, driver training, those sorts of things in Sweden? I, I think Sweden has a very strong and long tradition when it comes to safety. We are a rare country in Europe. We haven't been to war for over 200 years. Mm. So we care about our people a lot. And that is on the roads and in our work and everything like that. Okay, well, tell us about Vision Zero. What do you do and what are you trying to achieve? Well, we're trying to achieve a road transport system where nobody would die or get a serious injury because we were among the best in the world 10 years ago already and we thought we need new ideas, we need new energy into traffic safety. And then by saying that we should strive for zero, we have been a bit more innovative than other countries the last few years. Now, I don't know how long you've spent in Australia or how many times you've been here, but what, what, what strikes you that we could do better in this country? Well, one of the first evident things is to look at your speed limits. When I was here last 10, 11 years ago, I was sometimes terrified about the speeds on your roads. It's something you get used to quite rapidly, but we have a different driving culture. We have about the same size of our country, mm. but we don't have 100k on open roads. We are more towards 80 so you only drive at 80 k's an hour? Unless we have a median divider eliminating the head-on collisions, our speed limit is 80 kilometers an hour, and the majority of people is actually uh, respecting that limit. How, it must take a long time to get from A to B. Well, the difference in minutes, because you always have stops, you have other traffic, mm. etc., doesn't add more than a couple of minutes per hour as extra driving time. So you, normally you overestimate the value of speeding. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because, I mean, um, in Britain, I believe, they're contemplating lifting the speed limit from around about 115 to 125 or 130 k's an hour. They express it in miles still over there. Um, I think America is going from 55 up to 65. I, I thought there was a trend to go faster and not slower. You say we, we should drive more slowly. Well, that's depending a lot on, on the design of the road, because on a motorway, which is inherently safe with guardrails in the middle and on the sides, no oncoming traffic, no pedestrians, no bicyclists, I don't think it is the safety being the limiting factor. In Sweden, we see it's more the environmental impact from speeding, which is a problem on those roads. And on our motorways, we have actually lifted the speed limit from... 110 to 120. But on the other roads, the open rural roads with lots of traffic still, where many people travel for a long time with trees, with the risk of head-on collisions, etc., we have put the speed limit down. Okay, so on a motorway or a freeway, as we would call it, maybe 120 k's an hour, on a normal country road without the median strip, without the, the concrete barriers and so forth, only 80 k's an hour. Well, what about your friends to the south, the, the Germans who routinely drive at 300 kilometres an hour on the autobahn? Are they, are they just being stupid? That's an interesting concept of the Germans because they do not drive in 300 kilometres an hour. The time that you're allowed and can drive at very high speed is extremely limited also in Germany. Of course, you can develop your cars for it and you can test them in some strange places mm. and strange situations. But if you take the everyday route on the German motorway, the average speed is around the same as in Sweden, around 110 to 120 kilometers an hour. Okay, so we've got things like how good the roads are, and in this country, by and large, they're appalling. We've got driver training, we've got 
the fact that automobiles themselves are getting a whole lot safer, and then we've got all the, the rules and regulations that we have to follow. Where do you think we should be focusing our efforts? Well, I think we should look at the things we can change rapidly, and I think the cars is the number one priority for me at least. We know that modern cars can easily take away two-thirds of the fatality risk mm. by good technology, by support to put on your seatbelt, by support not to speed, by autonomous emergency braking. It's so much coming into the car that we can actually make permeate the market in only 10 years. Even if it takes longer to exchange the whole fleet, the majority of the traffic is with cars with an age of less than 10 years. And in fact, the average age of the Australian car, I believe, is 11 years. Therein lies the problem. 